Uh, welcome everyone. Uh, so this is uh, actually a special video on uh, field weakening or flux weakening control for permanent magnet synchronous machines. Uh, there have been some discussion on this topic on the channel uh, comments. So I wanted to address some of those uh, comments and maybe you know add some clarification to the material. Uh, that we have been discussing uh, and I'm expecting this topic to you know be a continued topic of discussion and if there are anyone with the expertise I you know feel free to uh, join the conversation you know and I think that's going to be a learning experience for all of us uh, and before I begin I want to thank uh, uh, Xiao San uh, and Elvin Boots uh, for bringing up uh, these topics so that we can address them uh, and I actually learned uh, a lot in, in throughout the process uh, and I want to thank uh, James Walters from Boguana R&D uh, he's one of my mentors you know a long time ago and we are still in uh, contact and we do talk about these machines related concepts and one of my dear colleagues Dr. Jiang Biao He from University of Kentucky uh, for adding some of his expertise to the discussion here okay so uh, with that let's move on uh, now when it comes to permanent magnet synchronous machines uh, we we tend to use either flux or field weakening uh, as the term uh, but looking at the more accurate approach and I think it's more or less terminology related but depends on whom you talk to uh, it's it's seemingly argued that field weakening is the more appropriate term because for a permanent magnet in a in the in the structure of a PMSM you can't technically uh, reduce the permanent magnet flux and I've seen folks argue in the opposite direction but you know I think we should let the experimental data uh, stand uh, stand out and then present the results so so I also uh, intend to uh, agree with the field the concept of field weakening that to be accurate rather than flux weakening and then when I was doing this research uh, I found quite a bit of uh, literature on IPMSM field weakening compared to S, uh, SMPM SMs or SPM SM machines uh, which has the surface mount magnet and one reason for, for that is uh, field weakening is used for high speed operation meaning your motor is going to be spinning 1000, 10,000 uh, actually not, not 1000 but 10,000, 20,000 RPM and having magnets on the surface can be harmful because at those speeds if they somehow uh, break from the surface that could be uh, a significant uh, fault in the system and could end up uh, with damaging a lot of equipment so that's one reason uh, to not to talk about or not to see some of these discussions with related to SPM machines and then the other concept is as you go into the limits of current and voltage uh, you're gonna run into uh, the power limit and in uh, in SPMs you don't have the reluctance because of the the inductance being very similar uh, along along any axis on the rotor however if you look at an IPM yeah IPM type of a machine you have the saliency therefore you get reluctant stroke as you inject the axis current so now you are actually sacrificing losses and voltage uh, and current uh, and efficiency ultimately to gain a little bit more torque at the higher speed so that's another advantage that you are getting uh, now in my original video uh, i had discussed how uh, in a dc machine right how in a dc machine you use uh, an and if you have a wound field you have the capability of controlling the flux through controlling current to directly control the rotor flux okay so this is the exact same concept that is applied on to PMSM uh, because if we take a careful look at the PMSM equations you can see that 
we have our Q axis voltage and D axis voltage at steady state in this fashion. And then uh, we typically, what, what we do is if we have our motor set up this way, you have your uh, magnet axis or D axis aligned to uh, along with the rotor flux and then your Q axis is orthogonal to the rotor flux. And by injecting D axis current, we are essentially influencing the, the D axis flux linkage and in turn affecting what's seen uh, by the VQS voltage, meaning your inverter has to, in order to drive the current, it needs to apply the Q axis voltage. So by applying negative IDS, we effectively minimize the effect of back EMF and part of it being this negative ID or ID component and adding that negative ID helps reduce this combinational voltage uh, and therefore you open up more voltage from the inverter side because you are now running into a voltage limit and since you have more voltage available now you can inject more current uh, or at least maintain uh, some of the currents and reach higher speeds. So, so it's basically a trade-off that we are looking at as long as you don't try to go beyond the voltage or the current limits of your system. Now, so this has been the discussion in my previous videos and so in that video I mentioned, yeah, you can open up voltage uh, in, in your uh, Q axis by injecting negative D axis current. On top of that, you may be able to reduce the lambda M uh, again, opening up more voltage because now your back EMF effect is if effectively reduced, right? So now you have a little bit more voltage available uh, to, to go higher, to go to higher speeds as well as if you need to uh, inject a little bit more torque. Now, the argument there was, well, even though you say lambda M prime R is affected, uh, seemingly it is not in many, uh, at least uh, on the forums that you have seen, some of the folks were saying it is not affected. Uh, so we wanted to address that concern, okay? Now, how do we, the best way to go about verifying this is use some experimental results, right? So if you could experimentally verify okay, where is this effect coming from, uh, then uh, that kind of gives us a, a, a better understanding of uh, what's happening. So I, I went on a, I, I kind of went through some analysis process and I'll walk all of you through that uh, uh, here uh, and hopefully you'll be able to follow the concepts here. Initially, I thought, okay, I have an experimental setup I have uh, the ability to measure torque and now I can verify, I can look at my torque uh, when I inject negative D-axis current and see what's happening, okay? So uh, if you are looking at this uh, experiment that I did with currents, uh, so in the first case, I have my Q-axis current that I'm injecting, okay? That results in a Q-axis flux and then my D axis uh, current is set to zero. So my ID is set to zero. I have some IQ, let's call it X amps, right? So that sets up my Q axis flux. And I have my rotor flux. I, let's say I have my rotor flux. Uh, yeah, it's okay, we'll, we'll place the rotor flux this way. Okay, so let's say I have my rotor flux this way. Uh, this is the rotor flux, okay? So that's along the d-axis. So now I'm placing my q-axis flux 90 degrees orthogonal uh, to the rotor flux, which helps us generate torque. Well, everything is good, no field weakening here. Now, as soon as I inject negative d-axis current, okay? So let me switch to a different color here. As soon as I inject ID, let's say Y amps, and I maintain IQ to be, let's say X, right? What ends up happening is that 
my q axis flux remains and I inject a little bit of negative d axis flux from the stator, right? And my original rotor flux, which is which was along the q uh, d axis, is, is still there, okay? Uh, so this is my rotor flux and uh, what's going to happen is in this case you will see at least you will see that your torque went down a little bit okay and you might assume okay my torque went down that's because now I'm actually weakening my uh, lambda m right well technically uh, my understanding in this case is no, that's not the case. The reason your torque went down is because your new flux vector, your new state of flux vector is now at a non-optimal angle from your rotor flux vector. So this is no longer 90. It's not equal to 90 degrees. And therefore, you end up generating non optimal torque so you don't get your peak torque if you do want to get peak torque you will want to align this flux vector to be 90 degrees and then you'll see that you're again receiving more torque than usual because now you have a resultant flux vector that's larger okay so so this is not a good approach for verifying field weakening uh, or how it's impacting a lambda m prime r. This was my understanding initially, and I thought of not following this approach because this can be misleading. So instead, I said, okay, how about we use voltage? Okay, how about we use voltage uh, to verify this effect? Okay, well, I think that 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 was a good approach, at least from the this experimental setup I have, because as, as soon as you inject your d-axis current, you are able to see the effect on the q-axis and the d-axis voltages. And now you can back calculate and see where are those reductions in voltage, at least on q-axis is coming from. Okay, so, so this is the approach I followed. And here are some results that I obtained. Okay, now by the way, I am going to include a data set that I use for this analysis along with uh, the video I recorded for the experimental uh, portion of it at the end. Towards the end of this, you will see that experimental portion. Uh, and in the comment, in the in the description below, I'll have the data, the link to the data as well as couple of papers that explains this. Okay, and here, so now the, the experimental setup I have is a 250 watt PMSM. This is a very relatively small motor uh, and it has a rated current of 5 amps. So I don't have a lot of current to uh, produce from my, my motor and the drive stage without damaging it. So keep in mind, this is relatively low power motor. Okay. The characteristics may be or might be different from a high power motor point of view, which could generate hundreds or 200 amps, which can easily counteract your magnetic flux. Okay, So and I'm going to mention that in a, in a little bit here. But looking at this low power experimental setup, this is the inductance value. And I tried at two different speeds. And... As I, so I initially recorded the Q-axis voltage at ID set to zero. And as I increase different ID current values, you can see that the voltage drop in the Q-axis is equal to omega R LD ID term, omega R LD ID term. And I didn't see significant change that is coming from any other variable, meaning I don't think, at least from my experimental setup, I was able to see this change. Okay. Now, the change might be very subtle at this current level. So that's why I said, maybe if you can inject higher current, you might be able to see a significant change here. But at least with the experimental setup I have, I'm not able to show this effect. Okay. So 
So I'm gonna I'm, I want to see what uh, all of you have to say, uh, and that's why uh, I want to highlight there are two avenues, there are two paths that folks talk about. If you are looking at a low current, low power application, you're not going to see your lambda m prime r change. Okay, you might not see this change. And keep in mind, your position sensor has to be perfectly calibrated. Your delays have to be perfectly compensated for you to be able to uh, apply field weakening properly. And then in high current applications, I'm seeing folks uh, use or, or, or at least mention that lambda m prime r value reducing. Okay. And I do need to verify this experimentally. I don't have the hardware to do that at this moment. Uh, so I might, uh, once I do find that, I'll, I'll share that with all of you. But I do think with higher current, you should be able to influence this lambda m prime r value uh, through, uh, through the air gap flux, countering the permanent magnet flux. Okay. Uh, and then uh, the next part of this video is going to be the experimental part. Uh, and I'll include the data and the paper links in my description so feel free to uh, put leave a comment or let me know if you think differently all right thank you folks all right folks so this is the experimental setup to evaluate uh, the flux weakening capability of uh, the pmsm that we have here and then looking at how this flux weakening effect of a flux linkage coefficient uh, which has been a topic of discussion that I have seen uh, so hopefully this will add uh, uh, some valuable information to that discussion uh, here what I have is basically a PMSM field oriented control drive system and I have a DC motor acting as a dyno for regulating speed and PMSM uh, regulating torque uh, and with this interface, we can control uh, many of the variables that are in the controller here. Uh, and you can see here, uh, I've set up a speed of 500 RPM. I'm going to push this up to 1000 RPM. Uh, and you can see uh, that value in radians per second on this, uh, this window here. Uh, and on this window, uh, you can see the torque, uh, which I'm measuring with the torque sensor. Here in this uh, window, you can see the currents, Q and D axis currents that I'm applying. And on this bottom uh, corner window, left-hand corner wi uh, window, you can see the Q and D axis voltages. Uh, so this is going to hopefully help demystify uh, our understanding, at least from this machine point of view. Uh, I know different machines, uh, air gap flux change, they saturate differently, they operate a little bit differently depending on the design. However, you know, this is a very small 250 watt motor. Uh, hopefully with that we can show some of these results uh, that we have been uh, discussing uh, in, in the forum here. Okay, uh, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna uh, so before I uh, uh, speed up to 1000 RPM, I'm gonna show the effect of adding Q-axis current here for this PMSM drive system. Uh, so I'm going to command 2 amps of Q-axis current uh, and you can see as I inject 2 amps of current uh, the reference, the actual current goes up, you are not seeing the reference, you are seeing the measured current. You can see the torque go up, you can see the VQ voltage go up whereas the VD voltage drops slightly. Okay, the VD voltage drops slightly. Now uh, I'm going to set this to zero and then you can see the voltages and the currents and the torque return to the normal. I'm going to command negative Q-axis current, negative 2 amps. With negative 2 amps, you can see my torque is again negative, and then the voltages here, Q-axis voltage drops a little bit, but uh, D-axis voltage stays somewhat the same. Uh, now, I'm going to bring this back up, uh, back to zero here, uh, and essentially what I want to show to all of you is what's happening here with my Q axis voltage and this has been a learning experience for me too. Some of the concepts I believe uh, have been kind of uh, demystified so that I'm very helpful to all of you. 
uh, and these two windows here shows the Q and D axis voltages that are being applied. Okay, so I'm going to move this up to uh, 1000 RPM. Make sure there are no faults in the system. Uh, as I move, oops, wrong direction. Uh, as I move in that direction, you can see my Q axis voltage increase. Of course, that's because we have higher back EMF, right? So we have higher back EMF and we are able to, and the machine is, uh, the controller is building or applying that much voltage to counteract, uh, counteract that back EMF. Okay, and I'm going to share uh, a partial data set from this experiment for anyone who's interested to look at it. Okay, so here the, the goal we are going to look at is by injecting D-axis current, uh, we're going to see if uh, the voltage drop along Q-axis includes the flux linkage or the back EMF constant or a lambda, a reduction in lambda, or is it only a reduction in LD omega R term uh, that's contributing to the voltage, okay? So I'm going to inject negative 1 ampere here. Uh, so you can see you have a Q-axis of 6.2, roughly around 6.2, uh, and then previously you had a voltage about 6.4 or something very close to that. Okay, and then I'm going to inject two neg negative two amps. We have about 6.1 or so volts on the Q-axis. I'm going to go to negative three. With negative three, we have about 5.9. With negative 4 amps of D axis voltage, uh, we have about 5.7, 5.8 uh, volts here. Okay, uh, and in uh, w once we collect this data, uh, what we're going to do is we're going to compare this along with our uh, along with our uh, motor parameters that we know and do a mathematical calculation to see where this reduction in voltage is coming from okay where let's see where this reduction in voltage is coming from is it from uh, the d axis contribution to ld omega r id that component or is it that plus the lambda m uh, reducing uh, affecting uh, the voltage to reduce okay so that's what we are going to look at uh, in in the calculation portion but keep in mind, this is just one machine with, you know, barely saturated operation, okay? Uh, under saturated and other operating conditions, you may see somewhat of a difference, different behavior. Uh, we can even look at uh, when there's Q-axis current present, okay? So I'm injecting some Q-axis current here. While we have Q-axis current injected, I'm going to inject negative D-axis current here. Okay, so negative 2 amps of the axis, negative 3 amps of the axis, negative 4 amps of the axis current. Okay, okay, all right, so let us go to our paper here and let's see what we find out.